Hello once again, I'm Extra Life. Over the past year or so, I've been experimenting with various different drum machines, samplers, computer integrations to try and add some percussion to my Eurorack synth setup, and I haven't really found something that I've liked yet. Something that combines the sort of ease of workflow and also has the sounds that I like. So I've ordered some new parts for the synth, and if I'm not mistaken, these should be the Hex Inverter 909 PCBs for drum modules for Eurorack synths. Yeah, fancy new synth cables. Nine oh nine kick, clap, snare, or maybe I've got that another way around. But as you can see, these are some really large and fairly dense PCBs. They uh, have got a lot of parts on them, including I don't know if you can read this footprint. This is four thousand six. That is the CD4006. That is a shift register that is no longer in production. I checked. So I'm going to have to find a source for some vintage silicon before I can finish these. But as you can see, there's a lot of components. And as with most DIY projects, the first part is soldering in some resistors. Lots and lots of little quarter watt through hole resistors. <laughs> Now any good electronics kit has an assortment of common resistor values that you use all the time, but frequently in analog electronics you need some oddball values, so I recommend getting one of these more diverse sets that has some of the in-between values in case you need 39 kilo ohms or 120 ohms or 2.2 mega ohms. It's useful to have a slightly deeper collection so that you can grab one or two as you invariably end up needing for some of these analog projects. <laughs> Once we're finished with resistors and sockets, we're ready to move on to capacitors. And for this project, I picked up kind of a grab bag of vintage film capacitors, which should sound a little bit more like the original. And I just got them in whatever values they had in the shop in a big bag so that I could pull out what I need. But for all of the in-between values that didn't come in that set, it's helpful to have one of those big eBay collections of every conceivable ceramic capacitor value as well. Off camera I have fabricated some aluminum faceplates for these modules and labeled them according to a layout I found on the Hex Inverter website. These modules actually have more control than the original 909, which is great. 
The next tricky part is attaching the PCB to the faceplate, and I like to do this by fabricating a little metal bracket. And this is aluminum flashing. It's the kind of stuff you might see on the exterior of a building to waterproof a drain spout or a chimney. And what you do is you mark out some holes for the through hole components that attach to the faceplate. You make a bend in the bracket, then you can affix it to the PCB using some standoffs. Whenever you're drilling sheet metal, never ever hold the metal with your bare hands. It can turn into a spinning blade and slice you up really quickly. So the ideal way to do it, of course, is to screw the panel down to a piece of wood and use that so you can hold it safely and securely. Bending this sheet metal is really quite straightforward. It's very thin. You can do it with pretty much any straight edge and a block of wood. Once you've got it in shape, you can mount it to the front panel itself using the potentiometers or jacks or your other front panel controls, and then position your PCB and mark holes to drill screws for your standoffs. Once the PCB is affixed, it's time, of course, for offboard wiring, which always takes me much longer than I think it will. I'm really not very good at it. My wiring isn't the neatest. I do try and use twisted pairs for positive and negative signal wires for outputs and inputs, but for the most part you can just get away with a common ground to all of the front panel controls. Once the panel's all wired up, we can socket the ICs and then give this module a test, although it is certainly a good idea to check for short circuits and other power line failures before you apply any voltage to this circuit. I'm hooking this up using a Mutable Instruments module tester, which is a really handy bit of kit to have around if you're going to be building your own modules. Now it's time to put together the 909 snare module, which comes with a daughter board for the white noise generator. But like the original 909, they can also be wired together to share a noise generator, which is already on the kick drum module.
All right, now I've got all the drum modules installed in the Eurorack setup, but unfortunately I still don't have a good way to trigger them because I don't have a proper trigger sequencer in here. Now, I could hook them up to my Super 16, but it's only got the one gate output, so they would all play at the same time. So instead I've designed something new, and I present to you the Trigger Finger 3000, a three-channel trigger sequencer, which is literally just a voltage divider that takes the power, and then three buttons and three jacks that send it to the trigger inputs. So let's give it a shot. I can't say I'm a connoisseur of the original TR-909 sounds, but this sounds pretty accurate to me. It's got that nice swooping decay that is characteristic of the synth. A nice resonant low frequency at the bottom of the range. Especially when that overdrive is activated. For my kind of stuff, I tend to like it sort of short and clicky, so I turn the attack up and the decay down. Gives it that kind of disco sound. The snare is a little bit less controllable, but it's still got some fun features. You can make it shorter or longer. And you can tune the resonance side. And you can adjust how much of the snare sound you actually employ. Clap is super fun because there's actually a lot more control than you get out of the original 909 sounds because you have independent control over the noise and this intensity parameter. And it sort of has like a pseudo reverb effect where the envelope for it becomes longer and longer. You actually can kind of do like build up and breakdown effects with it by turning this all the way up and then playing with the noise controls as filters. I've set up a little sequence using the gate output from the Super 16 to trigger the kick and then using the CV output to toggle the snare on and off and we're gonna have the oscillator just on a drone from the clock signal so it'll sound a little bit like a very simple Italo beat and we're gonna jump over on the mixer and see if we can dial it in a little bit and here's what it sounds like. So we've got the synth running through the paradriver and we can adjust the tone. And I've got the kick and snare running through their own mixer channels. And I've got the compressor here engaged on the kick. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, we've got more thump on that. And if we send the synth through the compressor, and put it in stereo couple mode, the kick will actually trigger this for compression so we get a virtual sidechain effect.
Well, there you go. It's a 909 style drum kit in Eurorack using a couple of DIY modules from Hex Inverter and, of course, some very advanced sequencing technology. I haven't ever owned a real 909, so I don't have one to A-B it with, but it's got that snappiness and punch that I associate with the 909 kick and snare especially, and the clap is way more versatile than the original. You know, you can use it to kind of like uh, self-oscillate almost with this infinite reverb and use the filters to dial it in just exactly how you want it. Of course, uh, Hex Inverter also made a 909 rim, which is very popular, and they also make a series of 808-inspired drums called the Mutant Drum Series. I'm more of a 909 guy myself, and I also like the idea of doing it all myself, so I went for the uh, old-school 909 series. They're not in production anymore, so you have to track them down on the secondary market. I got these, I think, from Modular Addict. I think they've got more in stock. There are a couple of rare pieces of silicon that you have to track down. Like uh, The hex inverters are pretty easy to get, but I think the uh, old-school shift registers, the CD4006, are quite difficult to track down. Anytime you're going to be pairing drum machines and synths, you're probably going to send them both through a mixer. It's really nice to have that extra control with a little bit of EQ and some compression, and ideally some reverb as well. Uh, drum machines just sound the best when they can get dialed in to taste and, and use the uh, EQ to kind of sculpt the sound as the song moves along. Obviously, I think my next project needs to be a more advanced sequencer, a drum trigger sequencer of some kind. This is uh, great for testing, but it's not exactly great for syncing up rhythms to my acid bass lines, so I'm going to build a trigger sequencer at some point in the next couple of weeks. Before I go, I'd also like to give a big shout out and say thanks to everyone who is supporting me over on Patreon. It really means a lot to me to have your support. It means that I'm able to take the time to shoot these videos and edit them and release them to you. So if you are interested in being a supporter, head over to patreon.com slash extra life become a supporter and you can get early access to all of my new videos as well as a little bit of bonus content. So click the link down in the description and become a supporter today. Well, I think that about does it for today. I really look forward to getting these drums sequenced properly, but thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.